Hey guys, welcome to the next segment. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the steel underpinning systems. Uh, when to use push piers and helical piers. Benefits v risks to both of those types of systems. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to hop right into it. First of all, the big thing to remember is that push piers rely on the weight of the structure. Okay, so that means that as I install a pier, I put the pier under load and it pushes up against the structure, which helps drive the pier down. Okay, now for each individual segment of pier that I put in, unless you're Ramjack, because you guys have a really cool system where it's one continual drive, super awesome. Uh, but for most companies, <laughs> For each individual section of pier, usually three feet at a time that I put in, I have to deload the entire system, which will have the house sink back down, put the new segment on, and then reload the system, which picks the house right back up. And uh, I do this again and again and again until I get to the target depth that I'm looking for. What this means is that the house is basically simulating a slow roll earthquake, <laughs> like a very slow earthquake, up and down and up and down and up and down. So, um, and the pier is relying again on the weight of the structure in order to get to depth. So, one of the limitations of our push piers is that push piers rely on the weight of the structure. So if I have a very lightweight structure, I'm talking about an outside shed, a single story wood frame, a uh, wood structure, like a cabin up in the woods, right? Very, very, very lightweight stuff. If it's so lightweight that the pier can't achieve good depths, then it's an insufficient installation. So, um, relies on structure, which means no lightweight structures. Structures. Helical piers. Because you can design a helical pier, whether there's loads there or not, what the engineer can do is uh, design a target installation depth and pressure to sustain the structure above. So, real quick, lightweight structures. Lightweight structure. Yay, that gets a check mark. All right, so if I've got a house, uh, the building code requires the upper 10 feet sometimes, the upper 10 feet to have what's called unrestrained fill. What I have to do is pretend that there's no support in the soil for this entire middle section of 10 feet, okay? So if I put a push pier underneath the house and I push it six feet down, then according to my design, there's four feet of air below it, and it's floating in the air, and the house is in the air, and everything's floating. There's no support at six feet, right? So most of the minimum installation depths you'll see for any of these types of systems is gonna be 10 feet down, because you have 10 feet of unrestrained fill, right? So uh, this is how a lot of the designs end up, and it's just something to pay attention to. Um, two, because piers have the vibratory load, I'm going to call it, vibratory load, two is smooth install. So for push piers, uh, again, you're loading, deloading, loading, deloading, and it's shaking the house, right? So it has a tendency to cause uh, cosmetic damages on the inside of the home. Not huge, major issues, okay, it's not at all, it can be, but it's, but it's not generally. Uh, versus helical piers, where you're going to install the blades themselves first, then you're going to attach the bracket, you're only going to put one or two of these loading, deloading systems on, and uh, it, it's, it's a lot less abrasive to the structure to use helical piers rather than push piers, right? Um, three because, again, once again, we're still on this point, push piers rely on the weight of the structure. Um, you cannot use a push pier, no push pier, if additional stories. If I'm going to add 
another level to my house. If it's a two story house and I'm gonna add a third story house or a third story to the house, right? So if the weight of the home exceeds the strength of the soil and this causes settlement, and then I push some push piers down using the weight of the structure to wherever the soil is stronger than that, right? And I support it and lift it up, it's all good. So now the soil is stronger than the structure and everything's supported and it's nice. It's a cool little equilibrium. Then you add another floor to the house. Now it's heavier. Down here is not any stronger than it was before. And this creates further settlement. Helical piers, again, being really, really cool, the engineer can design the helical piers as if those ghost loads, I like to call them ghost loads, as if those loads already exist, right? So you can have the whole factor of safety, you can have the whole everything and say, hey, I'm gonna add a third story later on, and the engineer says, cool, we'll pretend it's already there, we'll make sure that the installation, the design configuration of the helical piers will support that third story. So, three, four, additions. Yay. Now for uh, push piers, I got to say, roll and go, super easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, you go in, you push the piers, you're out. So it's, um, I'm going to say, let, we'll call it less of a carbon footprint. <laughs> carbon footprint. versus helical piers, which require like mini X's, mini X's, and they do have like handheld, they do have handheld machinery that they can use in order to install those, but it's kind of pain in the butt and takes forever. Everybody prefers to just use mini X, because why not? You can save all of your laborers' backs and time and productivity, and there's no reason not to. <laughs> anyway, so uh, for push piers, less of a carbon footprint, uh, mini X's are done for helicals generally, so you also got to imagine like your landscaping is getting torn up by the little mini X's that come in, and I mean same thing for piers, but kind of a tough, tough little give and go there. So five, we're gonna call it confined spaces. Now I'm not talking about inside a sewer spaces and helicals, kinda confined spaces, kinda. We'll just put that in parentheses. Um, so if I got like a small closet, still super easy to pop your pier in, lift it up minus the shelving because the pier bracket, anyway, uh, put the pier bracket in, or put the ram in, push your pier, install everything, life is good. Versus your helical pier, where now you're talking about driving a mini X into a house or using that handheld rig, where it becomes that pain in the butt I was talking about, where you gotta like get the guys who are torquing on the arms and sticking out of the closet and it, looks like somebody trying to wrestle down a uh, in the mid middle of a rodeo. It's kind of cool, but anyway. Uh, next, I'm gonna say push piers, install depths. I have seen push piers pushed 220 feet. And while helicals don't have limited, I'm still gonna put limited and I'll explain it in a second. Limited install depth. So I've seen push piers pushed 220 feet. Uh, if anybody who's been up to the city of Novato, any contractor who's done the work on Marina Keys knows that the San Francisco Bay mud is just, it has no bearing capacity whatsoever. We did every house on that street, all the foundation repair contractors did every house on that street and every wall was supported, every interior bearing wall was supported and everybody used push piers. There was not one pier that did not go down 110 feet. All right, so super, super weak soil, right? So when you're putting a helical pier into the ground, in order to tie into that soil, you're talking about lots of very big blades, thick, thick shafts and super deep stuff. You're talking about big, massive drill rigs at this point in order to try and reach any type of stability in that type of soil, assuming you could hit the torque pressure that you're looking for in doing that. Push piers, Push, 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 call it a day. Right, so the push piers push through all the bad muck, takes, takes oil out of the equation and life is good. Um, I think that's all the big stuff. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about in push versus helical uh, is nails 
and screws. So, what kind of support do these systems provide a house, right? So we're talking about axial loading or vertical loading, right? House pushes down, pier pushes up, so on and so forth. Push piers just drive straight down, but these have what they call slip shaft couplers, which means each section literally just slips into one another and generally isn't even like tied into it unless the city requires tack weld or something like that, right? So once I push the piers down and I support the structure and everything's loaded and the system's great or whatever, you have to understand that much like a nail, like driving a nail into wood, that if you pull up on that, those sleeves are just gonna come out, right? It doesn't provide any other support rather than the axial compressive or vertical downward support, okay? You can try pouring concrete into the shafts or polyurethane into the shafts to increase the rigidity of the steel and all the fun, which you do sometimes when it's deep, all right? But uh, that, that's stuff that you can do, but it provides very little additional support, right? This is versus helical piers, which literally screw into the, into the ground. So now think instead of driving a nail into wood, think about shooting a, a, a screw into wood until it gets where you need. And then you can, you can pull on that screw and you can hammer down on the screw and you can wiggle, 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 wiggle it. And, and it doesn't go anywhere, right? So these helical piers provide a lot more support to the structure as far as different types of loading that is going on. That's why helical piers are great for things like soil nails and tieback anchors and all of these other fun stuff that you can use helical piles for where uh, push piers are totally just, just, just not, right? So uh, again, um, relies on structures, so no lightweight structures, vibrates a house a lot, no additions, uh, has a lower carbon footprint, easier to install in confined spaces, and push piers are generally cheaper when you're talking about significant depths versus. Last one is the uh, loading support for either one, just things to keep into consideration. Uh, hopefully you guys found this very informative. I uh, got one more video to do as far as risk be reward on the push piers, and I hope everyone uh, uh, you know, got some info. Go ahead and drop any questions, comments, concerns down in the comment section below or in a message to me. Click like, subscribe, follow, share, whatever. All right. Thank you guys.